The 1984 sci-fi comedy Ghostbusters was not just a surprise hit. It was a fucking phenomenon. So much so that Activision was approached by Columbia Pictures to develop a game for it. And since the movie was already out, they had to hurry the fuck up. Specifically a month and a half. Less than half the time normally spent to develop a game from scratch. Due to the early deadline, Activision had to get off to a head start. So they took a game that was already in development, that was tentatively titled Car Wars, and built a Ghostbusters game around the concept. And it ended up becoming the driving shooter game that was released on various consoles. The main focal point being the Commodore 64 version. I've gone over the infamous NES version, but I'm going to talk about the Atari 2600 port today, which is the first version I personally played. You start out buying items in the shop. You get $5,000 to spend and four different items to buy. The image intensifier that lets you see Slimers easier in the ghost busting screen. The bait which lets you fend off the Marshmallow Man. The vacuum which lets you suck up the ghosts in the driving screen. And traps which you need to trap the Slimers in the ghost busting screen. You start off on the map screen where you'll navigate the Ecto-1 represented by the Ghostbusters logo around the city to specific flashing buildings where there's a spiritual disturbance. All the while, these other ghosts, called roamers, will slowly ascend to the top of the screen to the Zool building, which you don't want them to reach, so you can freeze all the roamers on the screen by running over one of them. If they do reach Zool, the Marshmallow Man is summoned and smashes a building, which costs you $4,000 unless you can dick around with the right difficulty switch in time and it activates the bait which sends him away. The roamers will increase speed over the course of the game, but early on they're slow as shit and they're only worth bothering to stop if they're along your way. The reason why time is important is because the PK meter is constantly increasing and when it reaches 10,000, or really 9,999, the game ends, and if you don't have $10,000, the game is over. The way you earn money is to capture ghosts, so when you access one of the flashing houses, you'll enter the driving screen, where you just drive around sucking up ghosts with the vacuum cleaner. You won't get any money for them, but each one that slips past you adds another 100 points to the PK meter, so it's more of a preventative measure than anything. You'll get to the house and have to capture the Slimer. You drop the trap, set up your first Ghostbuster, then press the button to summon the other, position him, and then press the button again to activate their streams. And you use the joystick to maneuver each one closer, although you can't back either of them up. Pressing the button again activates the trap, and hopefully he's aligned with the trap and you'll catch him and earn some cash. The faster you catch him, the more money you get. If you miss, you'll be slimed. You also don't want to cross the streams. As Egon said, crossing the streams is bad. Anytime you cross the streams, run out of traps, or get slimed twice, then you have to go to the Ghostbuster headquarters. This will be the yellow flashing building, where you'll either stock up on traps, or reacquire your lost Ghostbusters. Interestingly enough, the traps don't cost you any money, so it's pretty much a no-brainer to just buy everything. You have enough money for all three regular items, plus five traps. You max out at nine. Now if you do have $10,000 when the PK meter reaches 10,000, then you get a final matchup with the Marshmallow Man where you have to slip two out of three Ghostbusters past him. If you succeed, you'll see the Ghostbusters crossing the streams, which although crossing the streams is bad, it was a last resort in the final showdown with the Marshmallow Man in the film. So, yeah, this was the one time it was okay to do this. You'll get a $2,000 bonus and advance to the next quote-unquote round, where you basically start the game all over again. But you maintain all your cash, and since you've gotten a two grand bonus, you only need to earn another $8,000 to face the Marshmallow Man again. If you fail, then you'll still be able to advance to the next round, but you don't get that bonus. So really, the Marshmallow Man is a bonus round, and your goal is to beat the game as many times as you can and beef up your cash as high as you possibly can until you fail. But the way I kind of look at this game is that this Marshmallow Man is the final boss, and you don't really win unless you beat him. You can play the game however you want, but that's how I look at it. 
So it's quite robust of content for an Atari 2600 game. There are various screens with different playing styles, the graphics are well defined, and the Ghostbusters theme is very well done for a 2600 game. Although the fact that it's on a constant loop throughout the whole game will grow tiring. There are things about it that I do like even more so than the other versions of the game, particularly the driving screen. There may not be a lot to it, you're just sucking up ghosts and steering to get yourself in position to do so, but unlike the other versions, it doesn't drag on for too long, you don't have all these bullshit obstacles getting in your way, and you don't have to worry about filling up your fuel tank, which was extremely tedious. The ghostbusting screen does take a little time to get used to controlling with the whole toggling between the two and using only one direction each once you fire your gun, but it makes the most of the controller's limitations without being too complicated. And since you can only fire the gun at one particular angle, it's simplified in a way. Although the Slimer can be a pesky dickhead sometimes. He'll be out of range and you really can't do anything besides sit and wait for him to get back in. If he even does at all. Which unfairly cuts down on your payday. I think this version of Ghostbusters does the best job at balancing the gameplay amongst all the screens and they thankfully replaced the stairwell screen with the extremely basic, but far less painful Jumping Marshmallow Man screen. It's not a great game, there are flaws, but it's far more playable than other versions of this game, particularly the NES port.